you know, it's amazing to uh, understand that the mode of education instruction has been virtually unchanged for over a millennium. From Socrates and Confucius to today's university professors, it's been the kind of instruction we had, a teacher with his or her, her students in their presence. Even as virtually all the major universities have in the last decade worked increasingly to be global and international, the mode of instruction has not actually changed. We still have Students come to us from around the world to study in the presence of teachers, and our teachers go out around the world in terms of executive training programs. Here, a public health teacher uh, with those in uh, Ethiopia for a train the trainer sessions. Still the same mode of face-to-face -face interaction. The need for tertiary education, however, cannot be met in this kind of way. We know that tertiary education helps drive economic competitiveness. The good news is that in the last 40 some years, we have had a six-fold explosion in the number of students going to university. Therefore, 52 more million people are now sending college more than when I was in college. That is very, very good news. But there's burgeoning needs. Just to take the example of India, um, um, Mr. Parliament Member, uh, we now have in the last uh, National Knowledge Commission report in India, in 2007, uh, the decision that there needed to be 1,500 college and universities in the next five years in India if they were to try and meet the demand in the old-fashioned bricks and mortar way, the equivalent of five new colleges per every week. We need what they had in World War I, a force multiplier. We need something like the addition of aircraft to have a multiplier effect for how the outstanding teachers in outstanding universities can have the impact of their education really go worldwide. That is our interest here in terms of Yale's idea to put the very best teachers from Yale online for free the entire course. We have put the equivalent of an entire four-year baccalaureate program at Yale, social sciences, science, humanities courses. Every lecture, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, full video. But we also have put the exams, the readings, the syllabi. We have the full edited transcript of every single lecture, which is particularly helpful for those who do not speak English as their nat native language to be able to go back and study what was in the lecture. We also have, for the courses where it's appropriate, the problem sets and the problem solutions. In other words, the whole suite of instructional materials with the hope that faculty around the world will take these materials and take advantage of them. We know that other universities are at different stages, so we have high bandwidth, we have low bandwidth, we have audio only, uh, we have PDF, so you can download the entire transcript and get a free book, if you will, of the instruction. And we have it all posted on a Creative Commons license so that faculty anywhere can take parts of this, remix it, and remake it into their own courses. And it's going on worldwide. We have faculty, for example, at the University of Buenos Aires who are using lectures from our physics course as part of the backbone of their course. The University of Bahrain, our English literature courses are being used for upper-level courses in English language instruction in their School of American Studies. We see this now with sister institutions. MIT has its equipment in Massachusetts being used at universities all over the world for experiments. And we have sister institution, Monterey Tech, literally is showing the power of this kind of exponential learning by having 25,000 students uh, educated at distances all over their country. What we need, though, are new kinds of partnerships. We need the universities to come together to have, if you will, a major catalog of educational opportunities that are free and to engage with the corporations in new ways, whether it's the Google Wave application, which lets students mentor other students, or whether it's an application to allow real-time assessment of whether the faculty member's instruction is working in the classroom. Up here on the top left, you see Professor Schiller, who will be speaking next. This is his course uh, at the college, but you can see it's been translated with the Google Translate device into Spanish, uh, but it's also available soon in 40 different languages, again, to think about how the impact can occur from educational materials in one campus to be shared for free around the world. The model has to move, though, from individual bilateral partnerships with universities or with companies to have, if you will, a community of practice. The universities coming together with NGOs and also with corporations so that we can really have the impact that is needed in the world without trying to duplicate the old-fashioned bricks-and-mortar system. 
What I've been talking about is taking the traditional classroom instruction that all of us knew, have it fueled by new technology, new forms of collaborations, to be able to have tertiary education have much greater impact in the world to help the knowledge-based economy that so many nations deserve and need. But the application could be much more. Imagine this kind of education extending with capacity building exercises, capacity building programs with NGOs and with governments, partnering with corporations for vocational education, and for the important kinds of lifelong learning that's needed, whether it's child development issues, whether it's maternal health issues, whether it's other kind of health, so that we can find ways in which we would leverage the power of universities in the remake, redesign, rebuild that would be useful for the world. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Well, that got us off to a...